Stuxnet. 15,000 lines of code that achieved what no diplomat, spy, or conventional weapon of war was able to do. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the age of cyber warfare, an age that officially began 10 years ago with a weapon that changed the rules of the game for good, a computer virus capable of disrupting physical infrastructure on the other side of the world. That virus's name? Stuxnet. 15,000 lines of code that achieved what no diplomat, spy, or conventional weapon of war was able to do, covertly slow down the uranium enrichment process in Natanz, Iran. Who developed Stuxnet? Many will tell you Israel and the United States were behind it. The same people will also say, yes, they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. And many people will tell you that it took years to design, develop, deploy, and deliver to its intended target. But if you ask me, the people behind Stuxnet, they, we may never know their names, but they might actually be worthy of their chance for a Nobel Peace Prize. After all, it was their actions that probably prevented a much more lethal form of conflict. And it's not that counterintuitive if you consider the fact that Alfred Nobel himself had invented dynamite, amongst other things. Stuxnet was important not just because of how it changed history, but also because it opened the floodgates for an unprecedented decade of Israeli cybersecurity innovation. Each year, thousands and thousands of young Israelis are released into the wild after serving time in the IDF technology and intelligence units, just like I did. Fueled by the glory of Stuxnet and by generous investments, of course, they go on to create some of the world's most successful and innovative cybersecurity companies. But Stuxnet was also important for another reason. It showed us that we are now in a different era of cyber warfare, one where viruses are not just after our information, our passwords, our secrets. It's no longer about stealing credit card numbers. Cyber attacks in this decade are about physical destruction. They're about data manipulation. They're about attacks that we have witnessed on energy systems, on transportation hubs, on healthcare providers, with attacks like the ransomware epidemic that disrupted the United Kingdom's national healthcare services just three years ago, and even attacks on the core of democracy, the political process itself. So in simple words, the future of cybersecurity isn't about secrets anymore. It's about trust. And it's about the trust that we place in the modern digital society, the one that we wish to live in. And you know, this trust can be at risk more often than not. 200 years ago, it was German war historian and philosopher Karl von Clausewitz who said, war is simply the continuation of politics and other means. Well, it appears that nowadays in the 21st century, cyber war is the continuation of politics and other means. And in this kind of war, everybody is on the front line, not just military targets. So it is time to redraw the battle lines between companies and corporates, between cyber criminals and hacktivists. We're all in this together. It affects each and every one of us, and nobody is immune. In fact, even here in Israel, in the startup nation, in the cyber power of the world, this week we learned that the personal details of 6.5 million Israelis were exposed all because of an unsecured voting campaign ad, an app developed by the leading political party. Just imagine the entire Israeli voter database exposed because of the digital equivalent of somebody leaving the keys to the kingdom under the doormat. This proves that if data is the new oil, as we continue to mine more data, to aggregate more data, we must be very mindful that we don't also create toxic assets and data spills, especially if you experience a data breach of this magnitude. This teaches us a very important lesson for the future. So where do we go from here? It seems very scary. It seems nobody is safe. And yes, we will see more ransomware viruses, more malware attacks, 
and more types of evolved threats that we'll have to deal with. We'll also see attackers targeting not just our computers, our apps, or our web servers. They're also going after the many digital devices that we share our lives in. As you heard before, we're living in a truly expanding digital universe. With a hand on your heart, what do you have at home? More digital devices or family members and pets? Most people have more digital devices, and that's how the future is going to look like. According to the Munich Security Conference, this year, 2020, is officially the year that planet Earth, our home, is home to three times more digital devices than human beings. And that trend is only going to continue exponentially. That means we have to redefine our visions of cybersecurity, our visions of secrets, what we choose to protect and how we choose to protect it. And of course, with AI, automation, and advances in machine learning, attackers and defenders will be locked into an ever-evolving cyber arms race.